Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, we're uh, good morning. We're, we're having a little struggle with our technology a little bit, um, so the bumper uh, intro bumper was a little bit off, but uh, we're going to start anyway. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> gotta love technology, yeah. the good and the bad of it, right? Yeah. Here we are. Uh, this will be uh, now uh, uh, Tuesday, August the thirteenth. We're in a, a little mini series that we're calling a primer on it, on abiding and discernment. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the questions have come up of, uh, I'm learning this, uh, I'm trying to do cross-referencing, uh, but um, how do I make it so that it personally really impacts my life and the promises that God gives me? Because uh, it seems like uh, it's uh, staying at the, you know, the kind of the surfacey level, and I don't know how to go deeper with it. Um, and again, it's because our general approach in the past has been Bible study. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, uh, either get a commentary or have somebody teach us or, okay, I read the word. Uh, I'm trying to intellectual, uh, intellectually understand the theology of it. I don't disagree with it. Sometimes I don't understand it or it seems contradictory, but um, it doesn't seem to be personal. Um, mm-hmm. And so as I've been working with people, I've noticed this lately uh, with people who actually have been trying it for a while uh, or people that are starting out is um, they're keeping it too much in the intellect and not going to dialoguing with God mm-hmm. and let him process with you what he wants to do. And so we're, we're going to go through this little mini course to try to reinforce this so we can teach you how to practice this uh, and uh, start to uh, really go deeper with it. So uh, last time we started out with verses uh, that said that, uh, and we wanted you to write these things down. Uh, so number one, uh, it's not intellectual. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, number two, it's going to be revelation from God that he's already prepared. He's going to speak things to you. Uh, you have to receive it and not be a go-getter. Uh, and that uh, if it doesn't make sense to you, don't consider it foolishness, but but stay with it because he is going to disclose it to you and reveal it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we went into Second uh, Corinthians, uh, don't look at it as something I have to go do. The sufficiency is from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't read it as law. Don't read it as intellect. But let the words be life to you that the Spirit's going to speak. And then Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Uh, and it's going to lead you to experience mm-hmm. the life that I'm giving you and stay with it until you do. Right. And by the way, right. that's when you're released from your abiding on this particular thing is have you experienced it? Mm-hmm. If you haven't, you're not finished yet and, and stay with it. Now, if you're in the intellect, you tend to quit on it. Right. It's like, well, not, nothing's going on. So I guess, you know, intellectually I get it, but it's not making a difference. What do I do now? Uh, right. And sometimes even we go from the intellect to the lazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's not making sense to us. And and then out of laziness of still pursuing until he reveals more, we stop. Yeah. If we're honest with ourselves. Yeah. yeah you that's, know, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a true statement. Um, so uh, we're going to continue uh, that uh, he said, it, my words are spirit in life. And then the neat thing is, is that the sufficiency the power of this comes from the Holy Spirit who is resident within us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so go to John 16, 15 to 13, or excuse me, 13 to 15. Don't read it backwards. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see what he says about the role of the Holy Spirit. Sure. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. 
for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Yep. Okay, so the Holy Spirit, uh, his role uh, is to uh, guide you into what? Into everything that's true, yeah. into his best, what yeah. he wants to lead you to. Yeah. So guiding uh, is all truth, and the word there is is not just theological truth, mm -hmm. but rather all truth about the situations that you're facing, and mm -hmm. why I have you abiding. And um, it'll right. be, uh, I'm going to show you something like he did with me with healing. Uh, it wasn't that. Um, I was looking to solve a problem. In this case, he just said, you're ready now for me to show you what this, what this is. Mm -hmm. Do you have a heart to go? You know, yes. Uh, so, uh, but I need to be guided into that truth as opposed to, uh, and by the way, where I was with healing was, I knew the Bible said healing was, was valid. Mm -hmm. I knew that, no problem. But super skeptical, Hadn't really seen it, seen a lot of phony baloney stuff. Uh, and I, I kind of considered it foolishness. I guess it just doesn't really operate much today. Mm -hmm. uh, but God says, well, I want to reveal that to you. And the Holy Spirit is going to guide you into that truth. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be something of, of my heart. So uh, when I had to learn forgiveness... Uh, I got to guide you into that truth. I do want to transform you of something that isn't yet fully formed right. up yet. So it is about you. Or uh, I got to show you uh, circumstantially how I can deliver promises to you. And I want you to abide in this to start to learn this. So see, mm -hmm. there's no limitation. Right. Uh, well, and even in that, as you say that, one of the things I think about is him revealing who he is. You know, a lot of times, even I think about that um, as he's teaching you, he's like, you know, hey, I'm going to invite you to learn healing. He's he's both teaching you something in your heart that he's going to to help you understand and be able to live and enjoy. And he's revealing more of his character of who he is. Yeah. And so there's so much to that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, it's the Holy Spirit's going to guide you and the guiding is. Um, walk with me mm -hmm. uh, and let me start to dialogue with you about truth, truth about your situation. Uh, so when I was dealing with healing, he had to show me the truth of, yeah, you're skeptical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't really believe this. Uh, yeah, you don't even know about this. That was truth. I had to be led there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let me, let me work with you on this. So see, the key is don't, don't reject the truth. Right. And, 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 and here's the key. And I hear this a lot. I shouldn't feel this way. I shouldn't uh, be at this place. I should be further along or I should accept healing and I don't. God says, let's just go to the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll process it with you. Don't worry, but stay with me. Uh, I'll tell you of things to come. And again, I'm going to alert you to things that I'm going to deliver to you and pay attention and stay with me. But it's the work of the Spirit and so our, our heart, and write this down, is the Spirit is going to guide me into truth, and I should have a heart for the truth. Mm -hmm. um, That's and, good. And not be, not be judging that truth, but rather a heart for it. What is it, and what's God going to do with it? So he said the Spirit will guide you into truth. Uh, go to Psalm 25, 4 to 6. He tells us something interesting about this. Psalm 25, 4 to 6. Sure, it says... Um, show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths, lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation on you. I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness for they are from old. Yeah. Uh, those are three verses that are packed. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You could spend a lot of time on that, uh, right? <laughs> he said, um, I'm going to, uh, show you the way of truth. I'm going to teach you the truth. Mm -hmm. And the word teach is purposeful. Uh, mm -hmm. And you and you you are a teacher. Uh, you know, did your students 
when you first taught them something that they say, oh, yeah, I got it? Not most of no. them. No. <laughs> uh, would you say, well, you, then, then you're, you know, you got to, you're, you're going to get an F or that's it. You know, it's, it's uh, okay. Um, that's okay. Right. Uh, stay with me. Come to class mm -hmm. and I'll teach you how to work through the failure, how to work through that you're not great at this, how to work through. And no, I don't quite understand this. So that when mm -hmm. I was going through healing, learning healing, I, you know, I was, I was in first grade and didn't do very well at all. Uh, but mm -hmm. he kept saying, don't worry about it. Stay with me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll teach you. And I would say, well, what about this? No, no, not quite. <laughs> uh, let's try it again. Let me help you understand it again. And see the teaching and the neat thing, and I've, and I've seen this with uh, youngsters, um, because they don't have a sense of any judgment, they actually don't get discouraged when that doesn't work. Mm. Uh, they just say, well, I'm here. And yeah, okay, it doesn't work. And what, what, what now? What about now? What about now? And, right. and their heart is enthusiastic. Uh, mm. is, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to learn this. And, and so God says, um, uh, I will teach you, and it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. It's okay not to get it. It's okay. I don't quite understand it yet. I'll just keep teaching you, and you just got to stay with it. And as you learn right. it, it'll be, oh, okay, now I see it. Um, and, and he'll get you there. Yeah. So one of the things we don't like about that, though, is that that takes time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be, I mean, anybody, can anybody relate to, you know, when you're young and there's something you just, you know, I want to be the best gymnast there is. So I'm going to run out and I don't want to start with the forward roll. I want to immediately do the triple somersault and a twist at the end because I saw it on the Olympics and that's who I want to be. Yeah, yeah. And we have to, we have to recognize also that teaching is laying foundation after foundation of foundation as he reveals himself and he raises us up to be ready to receive the next thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And particularly because the church tends to be judgmental. Um, mm -hmm. and that is, you should, if I know this, you should know this. Right. Um, and you know, you better, you better operate properly and, and, uh, uh, you know, perform, uh, and God said, no, it's okay that you're in first grade on this. And uh, it'll take time. Uh, don't worry about the time. Uh, there's mm -hmm. no rush. And by the way, it may take more time for you. And like you have with your students, there's certain students like, I got it. Right. Other students, man, it took a long time, but they stayed with it. Mm -hmm. And God says, that's okay. You're both equally valuable to me. Don't worry about it. Right. Um, right. I'll get you there by teaching you my way. I'll teach you the, the process. Uh, and he says, um, remember, uh, my loving kindness. The word there is loyalty to the covenant. Mm -hmm. As I'm walking you into this, it's going to deliver the covenant. I'm going to bless you to make you a blessing. Mm -hmm. You can trust me. Uh, I'm going to deliver that to you. It's, it's my loyalty to it. That's where I'm heading you. And that's why I stay in class. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't leave it until you experience it because you're going to fall short and never experience it if you walk away. Right. Uh, so be taught. And by the way, it's into the truth. So that's why we focus so much on what do you know to be true? What do you understand now? What, do you, what is true now, including I'm not sure. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. well, that's true. Then let's go to confidence. Let's go to surety about it. The whole thing is about I'll, le I'll lead you into the path of truth. Mm -hmm. and keep pursuing the truth. What's true? What do I, as I was learning healing, I kept saying, I, I see what you're saying here, but that's not true for me yet. He said, mm -hmm. I know, I know, uh, but keep going until you experience this truth. Right. Uh, including I'll show you why you, you're skeptical. Right. Uh, okay. Um, and it's actually uh, fun, you know, uh, to go, to go through that. Uh, so I'll guide you into truth and I'm going to deliver to you uh, the covenant. Okay, read Proverbs 3, 1 to 8, and he says this is how it's going to come across. It says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And could you and do seven, seven and eight? Yep. Okay. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear <laughs> the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Yep. Um, and he reiterates here uh, that, um, you know, uh, bind mercy and truth into the fabric of your soul. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the word mercy there is covenant loyalty. Mm is bind the fact that I'm loyal to the covenant. I'm going to show you and ex have you experience the very, very best, the abundant, mm -hmm. the abundant life. I'll get you through it. Now, by the way, and we keep saying this, it's not absent of trouble, mm -hmm. not absent of, matter of fact, the example we're going to use is all about trouble. Uh, so right. uh, it's, it's not about that. It's that uh, you can trust that uh, I'm going to deliver the covenant and keep pursuing the truth. Right. And I love what you're saying there. Um, that whole idea, covenant loyalty, we need to recognize covenant loyalty actually reveals God's character. Yes. Yes. It's that he is faithful. He is a faithful God and he can be trusted. Right. And his word is true all the time. And he is for us and we are for the display of his glory. That's all part of his faithfulness. Right. And so it reveals his character. And when it says you'll bind this around your neck, I think about, you know, and on your foreheads, what are you looking at? When I'm facing something, I want my starting point to be, I serve a faithful God. Now let's go from there. Yeah. This is a problem, but you God are faithful. Yep. And, and this is where I hang my hat. And yep. now we start from there. Yep. And it starts with the truth and I'll, I'll keep pursuing truth. And then I will get you there. Um, and I'll teach you that, um, and I'll do it step by step. I'll guide your steps. He uses that word purposely. I'll, I'll guide your path. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a path, not a destination, right? Because our thought and, and you and I have actually even recently mm -hmm. experienced that is, uh, people who are learning this tend to ask binary questions. Mm -hmm. Should I do this or that? Right. Uh, right. And, and our, our desire is we, we do want to know God's will. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it. So I got the desire is pure, right? I, I have yeah. something come up. Should I do this or that? Uh, what I call a binary question. And God mm -hmm. says, well, um, it's more than that because there's a path to this. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't ask me binary questions because you won't then receive all that I'm up to. So just ask more purely. I have a thought about this. What do you have to say to me? Mm -hmm. And I'll follow you step by step into it instead of, and this is where, this is where the whole prayer concept has been distorted by the church is God, would you do this mm -hmm. and let me know when you do, uh, mm -hmm. or just give me the answer. Um, right. should I, should I do this or that? Okay. Tell me the answer. Okay, great. I'll go do that. Well, he said, there's more, to, more to it. There's a walking into it. Um, so let me guide you step by step. And then he makes mm -hmm. a statement, by the way, uh, don't be wise in your own eyes. <laughs> mm, so good. <laughs> uh, so again, as you're writing down this list, uh, it's a guy's going to teach me the truth. His Holy Spirit's going to guide me into truth. Uh, it's going to be a teaching process. He's going to deliver the covenant. Um, it's going to be step by step and do not try to figure this out yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't be wise in your own eyes. In other words, I think I got this. No, you don't. Right. Abiding is receiving, not figuring it out. Right. And even as you say that, I'm reminded, you know, we were just, oh, I don't know when it was, a couple of weeks ago, talking about Daniel 2, 22, and that whole passage. Um, and that passage reminds us that God is the revealer of truth, yeah, right? right. <laughs> and and the importance, you know, he promises uh, to to bring us that truth. Yep. And there are things that we cannot know if he does not reveal them. Right. That are simply beyond what we are capable of knowing. That's right. And so we need to remember that in the, you know, the don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes because you're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're just plain not. There are things that he knows that we, that we do not and cannot unless we ask. Right. Um, all right. And then uh, go to Jeremiah 15, 16. There's a quality about this process. Jeremiah 15, 16. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, yep. O Lord God of hosts. Yeah. And uh, 
this is, a, you know, the, again, the scenario is Jeremiah is called as a prophet uh, to uh, actually we talked about some of the verses he got in our uh, end times discussion about false mm -hmm. prophets. Uh, he was saying, well, I'm speaking what you're telling me. I'm receiving what you're telling me. Nobody's listening. Uh, matter of fact, they're coming after me. And so this whole thing doesn't make sense to me. Um, I, you know what? I just want to quit. Mm -hmm. Kind of where people with abiding tend to go. Like, mm, right. it ain't working. I kind of just want to quit. And God says, well, come here, son. <laughs> he said, it's a process, not a destination. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, don't worry about outcome yet. You just be faithful to what I'm showing you and let's re-engage mm -hmm. like you were um, and let abiding be abiding. And, and then Jeremiah says, I discovered again the, the, the wonder of receiving your words mm -hmm. and they became a joy to me. Right. Uh, and I love in this passage, if you back up and see what those words were that he received, they were anything but joyful. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the joy was in the communication with God in yeah. the intimacy with him and the walking with him and hearing his voice and knowing that he was leading him on a path and trusting he's a faithful God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so there's a quality uh, because abiding is a relationship and abiding in the word is to be a joy. If you're in the word, but you're not having joy, then there's something not right. Mm, and yeah. generally, it's that you've gone back to the intellect. Right. Uh, or you've done it, like you said, I've checked off a box. Mm -hmm. and, but there's no joy to it. It's like, actually, it becomes heavy hearted because it's kind of just telling me more things I can't do. Mm -hmm. uh, so he says, no, let it be a joy. And by the way, this can be even when I was going through the healing issue. Um, and God was challenging me and, and he would talk to me about, well, why do you not believe it? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I wrote, I wrote a lot of stuff about that because, because, because he said, uh, all right, let me speak to that. Um, now for me, I could take it as, well, I'm really not that good or I'm failing. But as I got the words from God, they became mm -hmm. a joy, a joy to me because they were life and they were God's words. Right. And I recognize that even when I was being convicted or even mm -hmm. when I'm learning something new that I don't understand, when I'm in, in that relationship with God, uh, it's joyful. Why? Well, because I'm eating the words. Now, let me, let me try mm -hmm. to describe that. This is the, the, the uh, picture of a ruminant, a sheep, mm -hmm. a cow. Uh, they eat grass. Uh, they chew it, chew on it, mm -hmm. swallow some of it. Some of it's absorbed. They bring it back up to chew more on it. Right. And they swallow it and it's absorbed and back up and, uh, and I uh, uh, chew on it some more. And I chew and process and absorb, chew and process and absorb. Finally, grass becomes meat. Mm -hmm. Okay, how? Eating the words. Right. Uh, and that's what God is saying is, is that it's not about do you get it right away? Uh, is it true for you right away? Um, is it an answer for you right away? No, keep chewing on it. And that is what we're going to demonstrate uh, when we go through an example uh, is how do I do that? Um, how do I dialogue with God to keep chewing on it? Because that eating the word is what's going to become joyful mm -hmm. uh, and, and stay with it. And you're going to have to chew on it and ruminate on it. Okay, and then let's just finish with uh, Matthew 18, 18 to 20, uh, as we're setting up the premise. Sure. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so as you're abiding... Uh, first of all, that's a personal thing. God says, I've mm -hmm. prepared in advance something personal for you. For like, Linda and I don't abide in the same place. Right. She's abiding where God has her, and God's abide I'm abiding where God has me. Uh, and uh, that's good. But what we do is that we share that. We do it more than once a week, but everybody, if you do it at least once a week, mm -hmm. and the question is really simple. What is God saying to you? 
Mm-hmm. You know, what are you writing? What do you, where are you at? What is God saying? What, what have you been understanding? And, and I asked two questions and she asked the same thing. Are you having joy? Right. And by the way, uh, and the things we're writing down to keep in front of you is, uh, uh, to, uh, don't be wise in your own eyes and make it, make mm. sure you chew on it and let it be a joy. And then, uh, this last point is do it with somebody else. Mm. is share that with somebody else. And what it does is, are you having joy? Uh, are you hearing from God? Mm-hmm. And first of all, it just keeps you accountable to the process. Right. Uh, because if you're not, which is okay. All right, let's go back. Uh, what's, what did you hear? Where are you? What's truth? Let's start over. Uh, I can encourage you. And then as I dialogue with Linda, uh, and she's working through something, I'm there to encourage her. Right. I'm there to say, well, wait a minute, look at the word has to say. Why are you having trouble with this? Not out of condemnation is let's get the truth out. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's keep processing the truth. I'm going to stay with you because God's staying with you and there's no rush to this. And my encouragement to her helps her and her encouragement to me helps me. Right. And he really doesn't want this to be done in isolation. So that's generally right. why it drifts into law. If we're doing it all by ourselves and we never share that with anybody and we don't get any encouragement, it's it's frustrating. Right. Uh, well, and it's even beyond encouragement, I think, um, when we think about the verse in the Bible that says, you know, um, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yeah. And that word for pleasant is naive and it literally translates as harmony. Yeah. And, and I know we've talked about this all the time, but, you know, Linda is hearing this, you know, and then she shares it with Rich. So picture the, the, the melody line and Linda's hearing that she shares it with Rich and Rich not only can encourage her, but then possibly in his time, God is revealing something else to him as he shares. It brings in the harmony that then fills that out to be the the fuller picture of what God is saying. And I think when we go to isolation, we miss picking up that harmony. We, yeah. we may get part of what God is saying, but we, we don't always get the fullness because he's designed us to do that in community. Yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, uh, if you haven't, go back yesterday and today and just write down these key points and keep it in front of you. Uh, that um, it is to be a joy as we walk through it. You're going to chew on it. Uh, God is going to reveal it to you. Keep having somebody else participate with you at least once a week. Uh, And then we're going to go through now, we're going to start tomorrow with a live example. Um, Excellent. And we're going to just demonstrate it to you how it works so that you can see, oh, okay. Uh, Because it's got to go from that intellectual theology Mm -hmm to personal revelation from God as you work through it. Uh, And so we'll we'll do that. So Heavenly Father, thank you for these beautiful truths that we've taught before, but we need to be reminded of and and make sure that we have it in front of us so that we realize how beautiful abiding can be because it's a privilege uh, to get the God of the universe personally wants to reveal things to us in our life, and we are to receive it and live it out and experience it. And may it be so as we practice this now in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Rich. Looking forward to more of this. And if you have questions about today's broadcast, send them in to us at questions at abideministry.com. And we'll see you next time. Yep. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.